Hey, what's going on? I'm Coach Brian Klopacki with CriticalBench.com, certified strength and conditioning specialist. I'm also a functional movement specialist. And this video is everything you need to know on why muscles get sore and get tight and they, why do they hurt? It's a very legitimate question that I'm sure you've asked numerous times. Like, why do I keep getting sore? Even if you are a conditioned athlete uh, or have been exercising for decades and you're still wondering, why do muscles keep getting sore? Well, we've all been there before, whether it's through exercise or physical activity or manual labor, we've been sore at some part, part of our life. Sometimes the sore is, is good and self-inflicted. Sometimes the sore, the soreness is a result of like an accident or some kind of uh, injury uh, doing some kind of physical activity. Whatever the case is, soreness is, is one thing. It's muscle damage. Muscle damage, very simple in a nutshell. I've got my little muscle belly here. Let's use the arm as an example. So what happens with muscle damage? I've got my bicep, this is my bicep right here. It inserts uh, at the upper part of the radial tuberosity, which is the upper part of your, your, your forearm there. Now when you contract the muscle, like you're doing a bicep curl, you bring that muscle up and now it's under tension. The nerves are firing from the brain, the signal that the brain has sent down saying, hey, contract your muscle to move your arm. What happens with over time and under tension and resistance, as soon as you start elongating that muscle, that's when these little tears, microscopic tears, happen all throughout the muscle. Let's take a step back and look at the anatomy of a muscle. Here it is here. We've got your tendons here, which attach to the bone. These are your muscle fibers. Your muscle isn't just one muscle. It's comprised of thousands, if not tens of thousands of tiny, tiny, tiny little strands of muscle fibers. And those are those muscle fibers that get damaged over time. Bicep curl, for instance, again, all those muscle fibers get stretched out and that's when the muscle damage occurs. Talk about soreness in that regard. So when you're dealing with soreness after an exercise, it's it's, it's a no-brainer. You're using muscle to move. That's the primary reason why we have muscles, is to move or to stay within movement or to maintain balance. If I didn't have any muscles right now or if I wasn't activating or engaging my muscles right now, I would be pretty much lying flat on my back doing nothing. But even still, my muscles will fire my eyelids. My heart is a muscle. All these muscles have to contract and relax in order for them to be effective. So let's talk about two types of muscle soreness that will occur. You've got your acute soreness, but you also have your delayed onset muscle soreness, or commonly referred to as DOMS. We've always had these types of soreness occur at some point in our life. The acute soreness is something like you do when you just physically exhaust yourself from some kind of just physical, but not too strenuous activity. This could be something like you're at a theme park all day and your muscles are sore and they ache just because you've been on your feet all day. You might not get the DOMS, uh, the delayed onset muscle soreness from that. That's more attributed to heavy, intense physical exercise, like heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, heavy bench press, things that are more taxing on the actual muscle itself, not a as the entire body. So DOMS will set in anywhere between 40 and 72 hours. Now the reasoning behind DOMS is kind of unexplained still up to this day. Scientists are still unable to find conclusive evidence on what exactly the mechanisms are for the DOMS, but it's, it's still attributed to muscle damage. We just don't know why it's taken up to 72 hours post-exercise to feel the soreness. We've all been there, like you go to an exercise class and you're like, all right, great, the next day you're like, okay, that third or second or third day comes around and you get out of bed and you can you fall because you're crippled from soreness. Uh, if you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's the delayed onset muscle soreness that I'm referring to. So let's talk about how muscle cramps and twitching kind of is on the same level as muscle soreness. It all has to do with the neurological system, how the nerves are firing within the body. So let's say you fatigue your body, you know, through running, um, through some kind of exercise class or whatever it is, you fatigue your body. Your brain sends these signals to the nerves to fire the muscles. Now, if once you fatigue, the, the, the neurological system or the, the, the 
communication between the brain and the muscle is delayed or not as efficient as it should. This is just the natural human process of, of, of development or of function. So what happens instead of being sore, the muscles start twitching or cramping. This is not just a neurological issue, but it's just the feedback from the brain to the muscle is delayed. And that's why sometimes cramps occur because that, like I said, when you flex your arm, those nerves are doing, are activating, are stimulating those muscles to fire and then contract. It's all neurological control. So if the input is delayed from your brain to your bicep or to the nerve of the bicep, it might cause a hyper excitability stage of that bicep to just say, hey, I'm cramped, I'm locked up in this position and I can't relax because the feedback is delayed. Now there also is some input on lactic acid with fatigue on how that causes muscle cramping as well. It's just a, a toxic buildup. Um, it's, it's healthy, but it's a toxic buildup of lactic acid that's within the muscle that causes that muscle just to like lock up. And again, you've know, you know what a cramp feels like, so that's what usually what happens with, within the case. Now twitching is kind of on the same, same part of, of the cramping. The feedback of the nerve, the, the communicating part, the receptors are all firing uncontrollably, and those causes the muscle spasms. It's not just specific to bicep, it can be happening in your eye, like if you're stressed or have a lot of anxiety or worry going on, you get that little twitch, that little that little annoying twitch in your eye. I've had them because I've got kids and they sometimes just drive you to the point of stress and you're like, why can't I get rid of this twitch? And you go on vacation and that twitch is gone. Imagine that. So in order to prevent twitching and cramping and even muscle soreness, you have to apply these basic principles. And you've heard it hundreds of times from myself, even from a doctor or any magazine or <laughs> TV commercial you might've watched you gotta have a healthy diet. That will help decrease muscle soreness, that'll help prevent cramps, and also help prevent tightness and aches within the body. A healthy diet that can, comprises of hydration, you gotta drink your part. And when you're kinda of wondering how many ounces to drink to stay hydrated, you wanna drink at least your half, half of your body weight in ounces, obviously. So if you're a 200 pound male, you need to drink at least 100 ounces of water throughout the day. Not only that, you want to make sure you're eating a well-balanced diet loaded with fruits, vegetables, good, clean carbohydrates, uh, proteins, fats, you name it, you want to have everything clean source. What it boils down to is nutrient intake. You want to make sure you're getting good vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in your body to maintain good communication from the brain to that particular muscle group. In addition to eating healthy, you need to exercise. You need to go through full ranges of motion. You need to do flexibility exercises dynamic mobility drills. A lot of the reasons why people get injured or tear a muscle or get severe soreness is they're not warmed up properly. You need to make sure you're flexible. You need to make sure you're also conditioned to the task at hand. So let's say you've been sitting on your butt for a couple years and you're like, hey, I'm gonna go join a, a men's soccer league. You haven't played soccer in let's say 10 years or whatever. You go out there on the first day, you're, you're, you're reliving your youth by just doing sprints, 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 all of a sudden, Bam, there goes your hamstring. Now you're down and out. You wanna make sure you're conditioned for the sport at hand. I guarantee if you're conditioned and staying flexible with a good nutritional program, you'll never run into muscle soreness or, or muscle strains, tears, aches. Yeah, you'll get some soreness because you'll be able to push the limit a little bit. Um, and third, but definitely not least, you wanna make sure that your stress and rest are in control. You don't wanna have a lot of stress in your life. Like I said, Stress is a, uh, a protective mechanism like where you're like, you're, you tense up, things get tight. You wanna make sure your stress levels are low. And by keeping them low, uh, one of the best ways to do that is to get rest. You gotta sleep. You gotta rest when you need to. If you're getting overexerted or fatigued, you need to make sure you're stepping back and saying, hey, I need to calm down a little bit or some kind of damage is, is gonna take place. That's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell of how to prevent and uh, reduce muscle soreness, prevent cramps, prevent twitches, prevent tightness. Again, all of this, it's all natural. It's natural for you to be tight. Uh, tight is also a, up to an opinion, like your tightness might be different than my perception of tightness. Either way, the body does what it's supposed to do. 
Now, if all this information applies to you, good. Now, if you're saying, hey, something just doesn't feel right, that's when you need to go see some professional help. Go see a, your doctor, go see a chiropractor, go see a physiotherapist, a massage therapist, and just kind of talk with them a little bit more on, on, on the symptoms that you might be feeling. Because there are a lot of different types of uh, conditions or I don't, just conditions, I'll call it, that will give you cramps, will cause uncontrollable muscle soreness or ache or t uh, tightness. And these are things that could have been linked back to a major car accident, some spinal cord injuries. It could just be some rare genetic disorder that just leaves you in pain constantly. So I'm just talking about just general soreness, tightness, and things like that, how it's related to exercise. Other than that, that's, that's everything you should need to know about muscle soreness, tightness, and hopefully you learn a thing or two on how to alleviate that and and hopefully you'll be able to sleep a little better at night and, and feel a little bit more recovered the next day. So if you found this video helpful on why muscles do the things that they do, you're definitely gonna wanna check out this report. I wrote it, it's awesome and it's free and it's for you. It's called Why Stretching Won't Make You Flexible. There's a couple of different ways you can get it. One is to click the little arrow in this corner to open up the video description area. You'll see a link at the top that says criticalbench.com slash stretching. An easier way to get it is simply click in this box right here. Click it, give us your email and the report, it's on its way to you. Not only that, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Interact with us by leaving us some comments, questions, suggestions, some feedback. Other than that, check out this video. I know you'll love it. That's it. I'm Coach Brian with criticalbench.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.